Hi, I'm Quinn and I'm autistic. Welcome to Autistomatic. When you mention autism, social difficulties will inevitably be on the agenda. Neurotypical people often say they find social interaction with autistic people difficult, but why is that? Why do autistic people find it easy enough to communicate with each other, but when non-autistic people become involved, we're told we're dysfunctional in some way? Most autistic people want company and friendship as much as anyone else, but the essential differences that make us autistic too often become barriers to communication and socialisation with non-autistic people. All three spokes of the autistic triad play a role in the way we socialise. Social occasions can be a sensory ordeal. For example, if someone has auditory sensitivities, they may find gatherings in noisy environments difficult. Some find the visual stimulation of a nightclub, cinema or fireworks show overstimulating, and any gathering of people can be a repulsive miasma of bodily smells for those with olfactory sensitivities. What constitutes too much stimulation varies from person to person and will also be influenced by everyday factors like fatigue, general health and emotional well-being at any given time. Because of this, we may avoid certain types of environment completely, limiting our social opportunities. I'm open about being autistic and I understand my sensory difficulties, so I don't hesitate to suggest a change of venue if I expect a situation to be distressing. But I haven't always. I used to mask to please other people like most of us do, sometimes even making excuses to leave to avoid people witnessing me shutting down. The second spoke on the autistic triad is our emotional processing. Autistic people don't always process emotional input the way non-autistic people expect, which is a never-ending source of misunderstanding and conflict. Half of us are alexithemic, meaning we find it hard to describe our emotions in the moment, or may not experience emotions in quite the same way as others. We don't necessarily get excited in the same way or show sadness in the expected fashion, leading neurotypical people around us to assume an emotional deficit on our part. If we don't laugh at the same things, we lack a sense of humour. If we're not jumping for joy, we're boring or uncommitted. And if we don't say ah or shame at the right time, we're deemed callous or cruel. Nobody chooses to willingly submit themselves to unwarranted criticism, so it shouldn't be any wonder that some of us choose to minimise our exposure to it by keeping socialising to a minimum. Finally, we come to veracity, or honesty, candour and consistency. Neurotypical people change their behaviours, their language and even their opinions to suit the company they're in, and that's a minefield for autistic sensibilities. Most autistic people are unflinchingly honest and ask for the same in return, but that's not the way most people work. Neurotypical interaction is a complicated dance of truth, half-truth, misdirection, omitted information and occasional fabrication. Salesmen, advertisers, politicians and others with the gift of the gab are experts at appealing to the expectations of their audience, but what they do is simply an exaggerated version of what most people do in everyday life. As autists, we not only find this difficult to do, we might not be able to keep up with the constantly shifting stories being told around us. To us, the truth is everything and may include information others don't deem important. From a neurotypical point of view, these aspects of who we are present social problems. We're fussy about the venues we choose to socialise in, which activities we participate in, and may seem inconsistent in those choices when we don't feel strong enough. Our Natural emotional responses are unpredictable to others, so we seem quirky or odd. On top of that, we can't play along when people distort the truth. We don't put on airs and graces according to status and habitually tell the complete unvarnished truth, even the inconvenient bits and information that later gets used against us. All of those aspects of our personalities are often greeted with hostility from neurotypical people, so is it any wonder that so many of us decide to withdraw? Rather than attend a social gathering that may be an assault on our senses, littered with emotional bear traps or a twisting maze of fiction, play-acting and truth, we just don't participate. Our rejection of social expectations isn't born of a desire to be alone, it's a reaction to the repeated rejection we've been subjected to ourselves. Some of us 
make that decision at a very young age. Autistic people being loners is a stereotype not because it's an inherent trait or symptom of being autistic, it's simply the most common reaction to the social exclusion many of us have experienced since early childhood, sometimes even from parents and family. Very few of us want to be alone, but it's the safest way for us to live. Maybe now you know the basics, you'll start thinking of ways in which you could help someone autistic feel safer, and in turn, your own life a little richer. Thank you for watching. New Autistomatic content comes out every Wednesday. And if you don't want to miss any and help us reach more people, don't forget to subscribe, leave a like on the video and comment if you found it interesting. You can make an even bigger difference by supporting us on Patreon or picking up some exclusive Autistomatic merch.